Welcome to my using the XV6 toy operating system Docker container within the Windows subsystem for Linux 2. My name is John Jolly and I will be your guide. So let's get started. I have here a Windows installation. This Windows installation has Windows subsystem for Linux 2 installed. It also has the Docker desktop installed. Let's go ahead and start Windows subsystem for Linux. At this point, there's really nothing here. I haven't created any files. I've just simply set everything up. I'm going to create a directory, xv6 directory, because I'm going to use this directory within my Docker container. In order to get the Docker launched, I have to run Docker with the run command. And there's a few options I like to provide. So I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it xv6. I like a host name inside my container, just so I know where I'm at. I also like to have it interactive using a TTY. We're going to go ahead and define the volume. Now, the big difference between my setup and yours will be the user ID. I'm assuming you didn't use jjolly as your username for Windows subsystem for Linux. Use your user ID here. I'm using tab completion to make it a little bit easier for me. So there's xv6, and I want it to map to the xv6 directory inside the container. The container image that I want to use is going to come from Docker Hub. It's my jjolly slash xv6. This you will do verbatim. You will use jjolly slash xv6 to get the container image that you will be running. At this point, I'll go ahead and start it. This may take some time. We'll get through it fairly quickly, though. And with that, we are in the container now. This is the XV6 container. XV6 uses the Tmux shell manager so that you can create multiple shell windows and move between them to do various operations. At this moment, we're in the RISC-V directory for XV6. This is the project directory. It is a Git project. You can see that we are on branch RISC-V or RISC-V, um, which is up to date with the origin right now. <clears throat> if we take a look at the kernel directory, you can see the source code for the kernel and the source code in the user directory. Kernel directory is where the uh, files for the actual operating system kernel reside. And the user directory is the directory where user space programs reside. Uh, during this class, we will create files in both directories. You can do a quick test to find out if uh, the XV6 operating system works for you just by doing make QEMU. We use QEMU to emulate the RISC-V architecture so that our operating system can run. Once the kernel is up and booting, we got a shell that we can go ahead and perform shell commands. LS gives me a list of files in here. I can go ahead and run tests in here, such as uh, stressfs, which goes ahead and stresses the file system for me. And you can see uh, some of the files that were created by the StressFS program. Now, the QEMU system has, it, as it's running, as it's running our operating system, it doesn't actually give us the ability to exit out. I can press Control C all day long and there will be no difference. In fact, the shell doesn't know what to do with Control C at the moment. In order to leave the operating system, I have to use a QEMU command. All QEMU commands are started with control A. The command to get out of QEMU is X for exit. So if I press control A, X, it terminates QEMU. So you should be able to get in and out of the uh, XV6 operating system now. Let's talk a little bit about Tmux. Tmux is a multi-window system. It allows you to create other windows. Let's say, for example, I've decided I'm, oh, one thing you need to be aware of with this container is there is no editor installed. You have to install your own editor. 
So let's say, for example, I want to install Vim, which is my favorite. App install Vim. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and install the uh, various components, uh, packages that allow me to uh, get Vim. I'll go ahead and accept that. <clears throat> Vim has completed installing. I can go ahead and edit other files, such as, let's go ahead and edit the proc.c, which is where the core of the operating system is located. <clears throat> I can also open up other files, such as, um, let's go ahead and do uh, user space ls.c. And there's the ls program that allows uh, that lists the files so at this point i have files open for editing if i want to do things outside of the editor i can use tmux to create a new window now the tmux uh, key that starts a tmux command is control b b is in boy so if i press control b and then the letter c for create you'll see that it creates a second shell window and now I can do things like make QEML. And there's my kernel. Control A, X will get me out of that. Let's say I want to do QEMU in a debugging mode. I would do make QEMU dash GDB. And what that's going to do is it's going to run a GDB server that I can debug from another window. Well, how do I create another window? Control B, C creates a new window. And now I can run GDB. Now, GDB under um, the RISC-V system we're using, we have to run GDB multi-arc. At this point, I'm in the debugger. And I can go ahead and set breakpoints, whatever I need to do to get stuff done. So let's go ahead and break um, sys stat. Oh, let's go ahead and do sys open. There we go. Sys open is when is the system call for when a file is open. I'm going to go ahead and continue. And you can see I've already hit a breakpoint for when the uh, when the sys open system call was called. Now, in order to properly debug the kernel that is actually running in a multi-threaded environment, there's a thread for each CPU that's running. We don't want it switching between the CPUs, so we're going to go ahead and go ahead and set scheduler lock scheduler locking to step. This is an important setting to set, and you may want to set it permanently within the GDB init for your um, container. In any case, now I can go ahead and step through this. I'm going to go ahead and do next. Now, when it calls the argstr and argint, it's actually going to give some information about the parameters passed into my system call. So let's take a look at path. You can see path. The path that was being opened is console. And if I want to check out mode, I can go ahead and print O mode. And it will tell me it's opening in mode 2, whatever that means. We'll, we'll discover that as we go along. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to continue. It stopped again. Let's see what's trying to be open this time. Print path. Again, it's console. So I'm going to go ahead and disable this breakpoint and continue. At this point, I've done some debugging. I have an operating system. If I press Control B to do a Tmux command and press the number one, it will switch to the screen where I can go ahead and run commands in my operating system. If I go control B zero, it will take me back to my editor where I'm editing files. So to create windows, you do control B C to switch between windows. You do control B and the number of the window. Now, to exit out of um, the Tmux environment and go back to the Windows subsystem for Linux, there are two ways to do this, but one way will allow you to keep your windows open the way they are. The 
uh, Docker container system allows you to detach from the Docker container and let it stay running. And you do that by holding down Control P and then Control Q. And what that does is it returns you back to your command prompt. So let's see if we can find out if our Docker container is still running. If I do Docker PS dash A, we can see that the Docker container is still running. How do I get back into my Docker container? Well, I do Docker attach. And specify which container I want to attach to. And voila, I'm back into my container, ready to continue editing or running my operating system or debugging whatever I want to do in any of these windows. The second way to detach is, um, is to use the tmux detach, not the docker to detach. If you use the tmux detach, which is control B D like this, what it does, if we look at our Docker containers, is it exits the container, meaning all my editor windows are closed, all of my, uh, my operating system is shut down, and my debug session is gone. All of those things have shut down because I did control B D. So my recommendation, use the control P, um, control P, control Q to um, to exit out of the Docker container so that you can do Docker attach to get back into the Docker container. So let's go ahead and, uh, since our Docker container stopped, let's go ahead and start it with the AI. AI is much like the TI. It allows me to attach interactively. Now, at this point, I have kernel files, I have user space files. If I take a look inside the kernel directory, you'll see I have source code, C files, H files, but I also have O files, I have dependency, D files. There's a lot of files in here. There will be times when you need to send your source code, the modifications to just your source code in. The way you send those modifications is you use the git command and inside git, use the archive. So git archive, and you specify the branch that you want to send. I'll explain branches in git another time. But you specify the branch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and gzip that particular, the output from that archive command and save it to xv6, xv6.tar.gz. So what's happening here is Git Archive is creating a tar file, gzip is compressing that tar file, and this is redirecting the output to my xv6 tar.gz file. And if we take a look in xv6, there's my tar file. It's 72k, which is pretty good. This is how you will submit changes to your source code. You will just simply submit this entire directory and, and, and submit it to Canvas. So now if I want to get out of the Docker container, I can press Control P, Control Q, take a look inside the XV6 directory, and there's that 72 kilobyte file. <clears throat> now be aware that Docker saves that file as a root, as a file that's owned by root. You can still delete the file, but you cannot modify the zip file. You can copy it though. We are very fortunate to have um, inside the, um, within, within Windows Subsystem for Linux, the ability to access directories on our Windows system. We can look at that directory by doing ls mnt from the root c and let's say i want to look at my uh, download directory right now there really isn't anything inside my downloads directory let's put something in there i'm going to go ahead and copy the xv6 tar file into mount c users 
John downloads. And now if I come here to Windows and access the download directory, there's my XV6 ready to submit. It's 71K here, close enough. But I can submit this file to Canvas, which is a lot easier than trying to set something up inside Windows Subsystem for Linux to do this. In any case, this is how you move files between the Docker container. So Docker attach to XV6. I copied this file into the XV6 directory that is mapped to my container and then copied it from Windows Subsystem to, for Linux into my Windows subdirectory. So this is generally how you use the um, container or the Tmux as well as the XV6 operating system within the container.